That's great. Um, great to chat to you. Uh, we are going to talk a bit about Steve Chalk. Why, why are we talking about Steve Chalk? Uh, Steve's done, uh, uh, he did an article in Christianity magazine and then he's done a longer article on the Oasis website. Um, uh, an article called Restoring Confidence in the Bible, um, which is, uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, and it just caused, a, I suppose, a, a bit of a, it's a controversial statement. I think it's meant, meant to be that. It's meant to be a kind of a, a, a provocation for us to think about the doctrine of, of, of Scripture. Um, so I've just been writing a few blog posts on it, as have some other people. Okay, in a nutshell, what's he saying? Yeah, I think um, I think apologetically, Steve's really worried that people don't find the Bible credible. There's lots of issues, um, and he's calling evangelicals to have a a global conversation uh, about the doctrine of Scripture, what the Bible is, issues like inerrancy, infallibility. Um, he, in the longer paper, he calls for what he calls some open Bible principles, things that we, we, we need to commit to, and he wants us to be having a, an honest kind of dialogue about these things. Okay. What do you think is, is kind of good and true, and what's he kind of recognised in culture, in our engagement with it, that's true in, in this? Yeah, well, I think Steve's re realising that uh, lots of people have big problems with uh, what the Bible is and some of the claims that the Bible makes. Um, and uh, I think apologetically, I think he's definitely, you know, re recognising something that many of us feel in ministry with regards to the implausibility or plausibility of Christian belief and especially what we claim that the, that the Bible is. Okay. And um, tell us a bit about how you've responded to, to what he's been writing then. Yes, I think it's two things. I, I think there's one, one issue is the issue itself in terms of the doctrine of, uh, of Scripture. Uh, I think the thing that's provoked me and prodded me, and I have been a little bit provoked by it, <laughs> hence the blog, I don't normally blog, but uh, I think it's been the, the fact that Steve is calling uh, Christians to have a conversation about this, and the thing that uh, uh, got to me was that we've been having this conversation for 2,000 years, you know, uh, you know, people in the second century were realising that some of the parts of the Old Testament on issues of war were might be morally problematic, how do we deal with that? Um, so it, the, these aren't new problems, and actually, especially in the last uh, you know five years, issues of inerrancy, infallibility, the doctrine of scripture. There's been some really uh, good conversations that have been going on um, uh, in the academy, and not just in, in the academy, but in the church as well, about uh, what these terms mean, um, what what we believe to be a, a, a high orthodox view of, of scripture, and other views as well. Um, so I think the fact that Steve's calling for a global discussion, he's a bit late to the party, it's been going on for a long time, and actually the things that he's saying, um, people have said it better, or worse I suppose, um, than, than, than he has. Uh, I think part of it is, and I do think there's a bigger agenda here in terms of just the trajectory that I think Steve's been on in some of the pronouncements that he's made uh, over the last uh, 10 years, remember the lost message stuff and then the stuff on sexuality. I think there's a... Uh, Steve wants to discuss what evangelicalism is and its nature and claiming the name for it. And I think this is part of that, whether that's conscious or not, I, I, I'm not questioning his, his motivation. Um, I think for me, the worrying thing and why I think we need to say something is because when you're messing with the doctrine of Scripture, this is about as fundamental as it gets in terms of who God is, how God has spoken, uh, the reliability of God, um, the relationship between uh, the Word of God and culture. Um, and for me, anyway, I think that what Steve is proposing, although it's not new, is uh, a cl the clearest kind of statement that his method, the mm. way he does theology, is, is not an evangelical method historically understood. Um, and is is becoming much more uh, liberal in that in in that sense in a, in, a, in a more technical sense, in terms of the Bible being open ended, um, it being uh, not so much the Word of God but a a, a witness to in people's encounters with God, um, and that leaves the door wide open for all kinds of um, 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 different understandings about whether biblical writers may have got things wrong or whether there are issues or you know there's there's lots of things that 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 that, that it, it, he lays himself open to on that yeah great thank you um not great but thank yeah, you yeah. that was clear <laughs> uh 
your your own response then you've you've wanted to emphasize something about the, the kind of unity of scripture that it does hold together um, but also um, in light of him wanting to talk more about contradictions in it and so on but also talking about the diversity of scripture why do you think it's important for us to understand and grasp both of those yeah so I, th I think the, the big thing in terms of the relationship between the Bible and culture is that um, uh, I certainly don't have or we uh, the, uh, a good evangelical doctrine of scripture has never had a kind of a Quranic view of the Bible. There's been the idea that God inspired people to say exactly what God wanted them to, them to say, but it was through the human agency and all the diversity that, that there is in humanity in the terms of the different genres, different people. So I'm very happy to talk about a, a uh, inspired and fully trustworthy uh, perfect Bible, but that the Bible is messy because that messiness corresponds to our human messiness. I think on one of the blog posts I say uh, a close friend of mine kind of said to me, Dan, I, I could never, your, your faith is so neat and tidy, the Bible is so neat and tidy, my life's a mess, I, that doesn't correspond, but I want to I want to say to her, look, the, the Bible is, is messy in a really good way in terms of how it deals with the whole person, how it's written in all kinds of different genres by all kinds of different people. Uh, and that's a, that's a sign of the Bible's truthfulness. Um, its plausibility is its messiness. Similarly with the, the idea of, of culture. Um, I mean, the big thing here is the issue of revelation, that God has spoken. Um, yes, we are culturally bound. And I think, you know, Steve is culturally bound as well. We're not in this enlightened stage where suddenly we're realising that oh, there were these ancient Near East guys who believed really awful stuff. Uh, the Bible challenges every culture. We are culture bound, but God is not. Uh, God has revealed himself in a way that we can understand uh, and, and, and truthfully as well. Um, and so that, that whole relationship between um, the Bible and culture is important. Uh, the Bible challenges every culture. It's always challenged every single culture. Um, we can't just uh, snip off the bits that we, we don't like. And you th you th that's what's going on with some of um, Steve's um, pronouncements on things like atonement and sexuality. Yeah, I, th I, I think so. I, I think it's that it's that idea. Uh, again, one of the il illustrations that I make in one of the blog pieces. It's a bit like um, uh, when I was a teenager. I went to a uh, there was a fancy dress party at one of the, lo the local nightclubs, and I dressed up in my in my dad's um, fancy uh, in my dad's clothes uh, in uh, in the seventies. And you know, my dad came from Guyana. He had a huge afro. He had all these bell-bottom flares, terrible medallions, everything, and I dressed up, and I looked ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, um, uh, because I thought, uh, all my friends thought, you know, we are it, and when you're going back and you're looking at all this old stuff, it's kind of crazy, but the point I make is that I know that my boy's about to go to university, he's going to come to me and say, I've got a fancy dress party, Dad, can I... Well, so have you already can I throw your, well, and, and that's the sense, I think, what, what we think is so outdated and unfashionable now and we think oh this really goes against w what the bible's saying we are culture bound in a, in 10 years time the stuff that we're talking about the bible will be offensive for all kinds of different reasons and i think that time boundness it just pricks the idea that we are so enlightened and that there is this kind of inevitable progress on 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 these things the the fact is though that the bible is and this is the other thing the bible is so countercultural uh, we we, we think we understand what the Bible says on all of these uh, uh, moral issues or social issues, but actually I would say that the, that the biblical writers at the time were being incredibly countercultural as well, um, uh, because, it, because it, it, the Bible is what it says it is. It is God's word. It's a word from another world speaking into our world. Uh, we are time-bound and culture-bound, but God is not. Thank you. Can we just get back to this idea that the Bible is messy? Because I, I guess um, we could mishear what you mean by that. Oh, well, let's, let's, let's try and get a bit clearer what you mean by that. Um, so, uh, when we talk about uh, the Bible is messy, you've said it's, it's varied in the different genres that it uses, it speaks to, to, the, to the mind, to the heart, in using parables and different things like that. Yeah. So it's varied. In what sense messy? So obviously the, it, it, it speaks to a messy world by which we mean a sinful world. Yeah. We're saying God's word is perfect but messy. Yeah, I think it's saying that, that um, as, as human beings we're wired, we're all wired very differently and the, the diversity of 
scripture in terms of genre, in terms of uh, the different human personalities. You know, uh, Isaiah is not Moses, is not Paul, is not John. Um, and that is all reflected in the way that uh, those people were writing. And that's Im important. Um, I think also that the phone's got, my phone's going. Uh, I think that also the um, that God that God then speaks to us as 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 whole people, recognizing that um, uh, uh, questions can uh, be asked differently and answered differently. That doesn't take away from the um, the unity or complementarity of the Bible. Um, in one of the in one of the a really good modern book that I recommend by a guy called Tim Ward who uh, lectures at the Proclamation Trust. He wrote a little book called Words of Life, brilliant book on on scripture, and he talks about the Bible's um, uh, canonically limited polyphony. It, it, it's a it, 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 it's a symphony. There's not discord, but there's certainly polyphony. There's complementarity, uh, and that's been a thing that's always been noted. Um, Martin Chemnitz, uh, who was around the, uh, the Reformation talks about the Gospels having a, a, a concordant dissonance. There's that idea that you know, different perspectives, we see things from different ways, uh, different perspectives on the, the truth. They all complement each other, but they all in, enrich it. Um, but there is no, um, there is no uh, diversity does not mean uh, division in, or uh, uh, contradiction. Um, and it's recognising also, as, as lot, so many people have, uh, that we are to understand and interpret the Bible according to the particular genre th that is written in, um, and uh, all of, but all of those things are, have constantly been discussed over two thousand years, and um, uh, it's it's not as if we're now only realising that. This is this is what many of us do all the time to think about these things. Mm. So an example might be just as you were talking, I was thinking about the question of suffering. So I think our world recognises. Suffering is a really complicated problem. There's lots of different perspectives on it. And it's a good thing that the Bible doesn't just have one very simple answer. Instead, it yep. gives you different perspectives on it that reflects that complicatedness of life. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was saying this yesterday in my apologetics class, you know, with the problem of evil and suffering, uh, you not, not just two, but you often get two types of people. Some people who are talking and want to question Christianity and their view of suffering uh, because they're just trying to... In, you know, use an argument against you and try to make a point, and other people are struggling with the issue of suffering because they are really suffering at the moment. And the way that we approach those two things, uh, the way that we approach those two kind of uh, contexts, are very different. And the Bible gives us resources to that. Uh, there's that, you know, there's the there's the kind of the the, the more Job Romans like, you know, don't even go there. Who are you to who are you to talk back to God on this? God created you, you know. Uh, and then there's that deep. Uh, uh, empathetic understanding that God has about what a fallen world is like. Uh, those two views, those two tones don't um, contradict each other, but it's recognising that people come even with that one apologetic question with all kinds of different um, uh, motivations and that the Bible can can speak to that. That's why it's such a, 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 a glorious revelation. Great, thank you for that. Um, you've mentioned, so you've been blogging a bit on the Oak Hill website blog. Yep. Um, Tim Ward's book is called... Uh, Tim Ward's book is called uh, Words of Life, uh, which is a very helpful book. I've been told that Kevin DeYoung's going to have a kind of a, a, a popular level book on scripture co coming out soon, which I think I, I, I hear will be uh, very good. Uh, but if, if you want to read a bit more, uh, there's been, I think it's a five views on inerrancy book that came out last year. Um, um, and... Uh, you know Tim Ward and people like Kevin Van Hooser and Don Carson, who spent really his his career talking about biblical reliability in a very sophisticated way. Uh, the, these are all 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 uh, very helpful people that you can read on with regards to the doctrine of uh, of scripture. But it's it's uh, it, you know Steve may think that this is a new thing. We need to have a new way of thinking about it. But uh, as my first blog piece said, I think we just need to keep calm and carry on. These things have been going on. Uh, we need to be defending a high view of scripture and to the kind of the, the cultural obstacles that we have in front of us and those the cultural despisers of the, of the Bible, the last thing we do is ditch the, the, the foundations from which we stand, which is that the Bible is God's word. God speaks uh, truthfully um, and relevantly 
uh, and winsomely, and uh, uh, it's in in that word that we meet the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dan. Thank you.